Hi, I'm Jeff DeRiso from Beckman Collaborative. And today I'm going to show you how to create a dashboard in Zoho Analytics to measure and track your KPIs. KPIs or key performance indicators are crucial to measuring the success of your business strategies. Zoho Analytics allows us to set up data sources that sync automatically, showing us the most up-to-date information about our KPIs. Then when we want to check in on the progress of our sales or marketing efforts, we just navigate back to the dashboard to see all the latest up-to-date statistics. Let me show you how it works. Here we are in Zoho Analytics. And what I want to try to do today is measure some of our KPIs from Zoho Campaigns. So I brought up our raw data table from Zoho Campaigns to show you what it looks like in Zoho Analytics. And the way that I got this data here was by setting up a data source. So to do that, we click on Data Sources. And you can see we have several set up for our Zoho apps here and other third-party apps. And then we can click Add Data Sources to create a new one. We have several options here, most of our third-party apps. We, have, we also can upload a file, for an Excel file or a CSV file. We can get data from a feed or URL. We can get data from a Google Drive or Work Drive folder. So, the possibilities are really endless for importing data into Zoho Analytics. The other important thing about your data sources is that you can select which fields specifically you want to bring in. So you can select Edit Setup. And that takes you to a screen where you decide exactly which fields you do or do not want to import into Zoho Analytics. And you also can decide how often you're going to import the data. The most often you can import data is every three hours. Now, if you do have a scenario where you need to update this information more often than three hours, you do have a couple of options. You can write a custom function with the Deluge scripting language, or you can also use Zoho Flow, which is a no-code workflow builder that sends information between applications in real time. And I will expand on both of those subjects in future videos. So let's go back to our data table. So when we look at this table, each row of the table is one email campaign. And then each column here is the fields that we have in Zoho campaigns. We have the number of emails sent, unique clicks, unique opens, bounces, just the raw information about each campaign. Now let's say your KPI is the click rate. So the click rate is the number of clicks divided by the number of emails sent. So that would be calculated with a formula. Now, when you import data from your Zoho services, these tables are going to come with formulas already added automatically. So the way to view and edit those is to go to add, edit formulas. There are two kinds of formulas, uh, formula columns, which creates a new column in your table and does the calculation for each row. You also have aggregate formulas, and aggregate formulas allow you to do calculations on the entire data table. So these were the aggregate formulas that were added by default by Zoho. So let's look at the click rate, for example. So the way this formula is calculated is the sum of the unique clicks column divided by the sum of the emails sent column. And if you want to represent that as a percentage, you multiply that number by 100 and you make sure your data type says percentage here. So the aggregate formulas don't show up in the table, but when we go to create our KPI widgets, they will show up. So now that we've gotten our data into analytics and we understand how the KPIs are being calculated, we can create our dashboard. So let's click Create and Dashboard. We'll call it email KPIs. So this is our drag and drop uh, dashboard builder. On the left side here, we have our list of reports that we can just easily grab and drag them out. But first I wanna show you the widgets. So let's go to the right hand side here and select widget. So the first thing we wanna do in our widget is define where the data, where we're pulling this data from. So I'll select data column, campaigns, and our column will be, and now here we see our aggregate formulas, click rate. So we'll select click rate. 
Now, group by is usually going to be a date field or a time field. So we'll choose cent time and we'll say month and year. Now, and for our value, we want to select latest. And what that means is that our value is going to show the click rate from the latest month that's in our data table. So if that's February 2024, for example, it's going to show us that. So we can preview the widget by clicking settings. So you see here, it's, it's pulled the February 2024 data from our Zoho campaigns information, and it's given us a value here. And here are, here we can affect these labels. So I can just type in raw text here and say click rate. Uh, the other way I can do that is by dynamically inserting the field label by doing that string of text here, dot label. And that will dynamically pull in the name of the aggregate formula so that if the, the name of the aggregate formula ever changes, it will dynamically pull into your dashboard. So now we've created a basic widget. We can also uh, select the type of widget. And a good one to do is comparing the latest with the previous group, uh, the previous month, for example. So if we select this and we say latest and previous, the primary value is the latest month. And the secondary value that's displayed down here is going to be the previous month. And you say, make sure you select at the bottom here, compare latest with previous. Now let's go back to settings to preview it. Okay, so now we have the same number from February 2024, uh, but it's we now at the bottom have January's number and we can compare the two. And we have an arrow indicator that tells us that this click rate is down since last month. But let's say, for example, you were measuring bounce rate where you want it to be down. So you wouldn't want the arrow necessarily to be red when it's gone down because that's a good thing. So you can actually just change the color of the arrows right here in this screen if you wanted to. Now, when we changed the type, we lost our label. So I'll just redo that label real quick. Okay, so now we have our click rate from February 2024 compared to January, and we see that it's down. We also have the ability to do custom stylings for our widget, uh, but we can do custom styling also at the dashboard level using themes. So I'm just going to keep the themes selected now for this widget and I'm going to click apply. Okay, so we've now created our first widget. The other thing we might want to do is show our latest value in relation to our KPI target or goal. So let's create another widget. And this time we'll create the dial chart and we'll select our data column. And we'll select, this time we'll select open rate. And we'll, again, maybe this time we wanna do it by quarter. So we'll do cent time, quarter and year. Now, instead of previous for our target, we want to add a constant value here. And that is going to be whatever our target open rate percentage is. So let's just say a good one is 40%. Okay. And then your maximum would be some number that's higher than your target. So let's look at the settings to preview that. Okay. So here we have our dial chart widget. We have our open rate for Q1 2024, and this line here is our target, 40%. Uh, we can select show target label here, and that makes it a little easier to understand that this is our KPI target, here this line, and this is our actual value based on the data in the table in our aggregate formula. We also can change the styling of the dial itself. We can create a speedometer style, and we can also manually set the ranges for the red, yellow, and green sections. We can also create a conditional dial where the value changes color based on how close you are to your target. So within 25, 50%, within 
it's going to change color. We'll just select a simple, and that's just our basic monochromatic dial here. And again, we can update our label here. And we'll click apply. So now we've created our dial widget, which tells us how close we are to our quarterly open rate goal. So that's two different common styles of KPI widgets. So now we can create these widgets for all of our KPIs, and this dashboard will live update every three hours with the new numbers based on the current data. So now what we can do is go one step further and show the trends of our KPIs over time. And we'll do that by creating a chart. So we'll select create, chart view, and we'll select the campaigns, the same campaigns table. So let's create a chart that shows the hard bounce rate over time. So we'll, we'll drag hard bounce rate to the Y axis. We'll choose again, sent time on the X axis. We'll select month and year, and we'll generate graph. So all we had to do was drag and drop those two columns and automatically we've generated a trend graph for our bounce rate over time. We can do different chart types here and we can also change our chart settings in, if we want a smooth line, for example, instead of a straight line between our markers. And let's give this chart a name. Say, that's great. Trend. The other thing we can do is click analysis, trend line, add a trend line, and we'll use our hard bounce rate, and we'll click apply. So now we see our trend line based on the averages of our bounce rate data over time. So that can be really helpful to see how things are going in any certain KPI or metric. So now we'll save this chart once again. Now the other thing we can do with this chart is that we may want to limit the time period in certain cases. So what we can do is create what's called the user filter. So we'll select this user filters tab here. We'll drag sent time in there. And for our component type, we'll choose relative period. And this gives us these options that we can choose. I, I like to select this year, previous year, last three years, this quarter, previous, last three quarters, this month, previous, last three months, and last six months. And by default, it's going to show you all everything. We can also default to a specific one of these values if we want to choose this month, this year, this quarter, etc. We'll leave it blank for now, but we'll leave our user filter. Now we'll click Save. Now let's go back to our dashboard builder. And all we have to do is drag this out into our dashboard. Now you can see automatically our user filter got added to the dashboard, but we may not necessarily want to do that because that's going to affect the entire dashboard rather than just this report. So I'm going to hit the remove button here. And instead of adding it as a user filter for the entire dashboard, I want to select the three dots here and select options and say show report specific user filter. That way just this report has a user filter and we'll go to view mode for a second. We'll click save and we'll go to view mode. So for example, we're, we're seeing right now we're seeing all the data from July, 2022 to January, 2024. What if we want to just select the previous year? Okay, so now we're seeing just, Jan just January to December of 2023 because of this user filter here. We can select this year. We're only seeing two months worth of data here because we're in February. You could select the previous quarter. So we get three months worth of data here. So that's how the user filter works. We can reset and it gives us all the data once again. So now to affect the overall look of this dashboard, we can go to themes up here in the top right hand corner. And we can just select these and see 
we have some different options for our themes. And when you one of these themes that you like, you can customize the colors here. You can make a dark theme. We have our lighter ones, and you can customize these colors further in the customize tab here. And here's where you can get really specific about what colors you want. So I'll click apply. So now we have this visually appealing dashboard with a consistent color scheme that also contains accurate and up-to-date information. So that's how you make a KPI dashboard in Zoho Analytics. Uh, this is a good thing to do at the beginning of a year or whenever you make a big shift in your business strategy and you have new things that you want to measure. Um, you just set it, you set this up once and you come back to it every month or every quarter, whenever you need to check on how things are going. So if you're a Zoho Analytics user, dashboards can give you a really high level view of your data in a way where you can just check in on it quickly and get back to what you're doing. If you have any questions, feel free to add them in the comments and you can always contact Beckman Collaborative for support and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thank you.